pitcher vivid press roster is ready as we announce tonight's starting lineup. First, please welcome the visiting Seattle U Red Hawks. A goal number one, Josh Adachi. Defender number four, Nathan Ani. Forward number seven, Noe Captain number five, Alec Healer. Midfielder number seven, Zach. Red Hot Wolverines have won five straights and they're heading into their final home series stretch this weekend. A familiar foe from the Pacific Northwest in Seattle U trying to spoil the party tonight. Red Hawks, Wolverines, next on UVU TV. of October in Orem, Utah, just south of Salt Lake City on the campus of Utah Valley University. Brandon Crow alongside Thomas Loomis. Thomas making me feel like a chump wearing my long sleeves out here. It's chilly. <laughs> but Thomas, the former player, looking like he's ready to go back out there on the pitch. Hey, it's an exciting night. It has cooled off a little bit, but it's going to be perfect conditions for UVU under these, you know, desert mountains. It's cooled off a little bit, but exactly what you want to be able to fly around all night long on a rivalry match like tonight. Speaking of rivalry matches, taking a look at the WAC standings for us right here. Utah Valley number two, Seattle right behind him at number three. Yeah, it's going to be a competitive, you know, hard, hard fought night. Seattle, they're sitting at three. They're going to want to push for that number two spot, knock UVU off the table, going into WAC, or WAC tournament play here soon. UVU has a point to prove that they 
deserve to be up there and they deserve a top seeding into the tournament. So should be a great fought match tonight. And Thomas, the last time you and I were together on a broadcast, Utah Valley began their five-game win streak against UTRGV, and ever since then they haven't looked back. Yeah, they're on a great momentum swing right now, developed a nice rhythm, struggled on you know, a little bit early on in the season, but I think that they've found their players that are going to step up big in the right moments, Austin Buxton and uh, Blake Frischnick, they can come up big for their team, whether it's scoring off crosses, set pieces corner, they found a way and uh, they're going to need to find that tonight against a team and a squad like Seattle U. And you notice in that stat graphic right there, Utah Valley was 10-2 and two over that five-game stretch. And coming into this game, especially this matchup, you mentioned it with me, Thomas, that Utah Valley, when they strike first, they're lethal. Yeah, that's one of my big key uh, you know, moments for this game or key stats is that when they score first, they've won the last six games. So... 6-0 and when they score first, if they can come out in the first half, score, get an early goal, that'll set the tone and put them in good position against a team like Seattle U. Uh, my next key point is that Seattle hasn't lost the UVU. In my time here and uh, since they became a Division I program, it's become a rivalry match and Seattle U is undefeated. So they put themselves, you know, in that kind of mindset going against UVU. They're going to come out and try to knock them off the table to put themselves at number two on whack play. Seattle U has won seven of their last eight. Utah Valley has won their last five. It's number two versus number three, and it's gonna be a good one. Grab your stuff and be right back here on UVU TV. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from innovative exercise science, outdoor recreation to STEM programs, there's a place for you at Utah Valley University. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. You're watching UVU TV. Welcome to Klein Field on the campus of Utah Valley University. Brandon Crow alongside Thomas Loomis. Hope you got your popcorn and hopefully your seatbelts are buckled because this should be a high octane match tonight. Utah Valley number two in the WAC standings and Seattle U number three in the WAC standings. Coming to you in HD on UVU TV and the WAC Sports Digital Network. Utah Valley in their home all greens with the white trim and Utah Valley's opponent Seattle U and they're visiting all whites with the black trim. Utah Valley will be attacking from right to left as we see it and as you see it. And Seattle U Thomas attacking from left to right as our viewers see it at home. High press right from the start. You see Seattle trying to push high and they win it in their half. Good pressure there by Seattle U. UVU is going to have to get used to that and try to you know, play quickly and get it out of their own half. Some of those keys to the game that you were talking about Thomas, Utah Valley 6-0 when they score first. And especially at the beginning of that five-game win streak against UTRGV, they did score first. And it was it was our main man, Frischnecht, who converted from the spot to break that stalemate 0-0 tie. But right now, Seattle U knocking on the door with a heavy throw in. But solid defense by Utah Valley gets it out of the box. Seattle U still in the area and finally cleared out of the area by Utah Valley. And Frischnecht sending a blazing cross a little too fast for his teammate Luis Vargas. Really good idea there by uh, Austin Buxton. He's able to split the defense right there and get up by the half. Luis Vargas, as you mentioned, flying up that right side. I think Buxton looked to curl it with the outside of his foot, tried to swing it in there away from the keeper into his foot. Didn't quite get enough curl on it that he wanted to there. Both teams like to play very fast-paced and, and physical. Seattle U and Utah Valley, geographically, you could say, though there was a late whistle from the Utah Valley standpoint. You can almost hear a collective sigh of relief coming from the bench very, very close by. And Utah Valley escapes a, an early Red Hawk scuffle in the box. But geographically, you look at the Pacific Northwest and then Utah, you wouldn't say that generically they might be rivals, but within this conference, absolutely, this has been an organic rivalry over the past several years. 
Yeah, since UVU was introduced into WAC play, you know, starting as a D1 program in 2014, you know, that season on, it's really developed these two go at it. Uh, and I would say UVU maybe even more so than Seattle because they haven't got the upper hand. They haven't beat Seattle once. So UVU definitely has a chip on their shoulder tonight coming, again, coming out against Seattle U. Utah Valley, the school itself right now is in the middle of fall break, so not too, too many of those crazies that you see on the sideline, a very typical atmosphere, which I'm sure we might see some on Saturday night against San Jose State, but right now Utah Valley trying to organically create that energy on the pitch. Right now working it into Seattle U Red Hawk territory. And there's the swing inside towards the box. That was looking for Frisch next. Seattle U trying to clear it out, having some trouble at the moment. A little late elbow fly from Ayala. And we're going to see what the officials have to discuss about this. Yeah, you see Carter Johnson holding them up a little bit, but then, you know, that, that 27 there for Seattle throws that arm and gets him in the face. Looks like he's going to call that first one is what it's looking like. It's going to be Seattle, Seattle ball. Interesting call there by the referee. Trying to set the tone early, I guess. Head referee Chris Greer having a discussion with both players, but he will elect to go with that first initial foul that he saw, not the quote-unquote retaliation, if you will, or the aftermath from Ayala. And the free kick by Seattle U sent in. And taken very quickly again by Utah Valley. Now here's Buxton showing off that speed down the left-hand side. A nice flick to Frischneck. Frischneck with a nice first touch on the left-hand side, flirting with that violent flick inside and kicked out of the box. Still within Red Hawk territory, Utah Valley trying to keep it in. And it will be a goal kick signaled by the head referee, Chris Greer. Great opportunity there by UVU. Buxton able to go at him with the speed, like you said. Fights Frischnick, fantastic first touch by Frischnick. He saw the angle that he had on that player, takes a big first touch to be able to get around him, and uh, looks for that near post space. Zach Moss was flying into that near post. Seattle U be able to get there before, though. So best opportunity so far for UVU. They need to have more, more chances like that going forward if they want to beat a team like Seattle. You saw a quick graphic there highlighting goalkeeper Josh Adashi. Adashi has been a key factor for the Seattle U defensive side six shutouts so far on this season and Utah Valley trying to spoil that right now Seattle U you see that ball moving very very quickly it's been very moist and very cold here in Utah recently getting some rain some snow even in the mountains yes yeah, the type of surface you actually love as a player especially you know two sides like this that play a lot of possession oriented soccer keep the ball on the ground you know, they'll have moments that they're going to look to spray it wide and into those diagonals. But UVU and Seattle, they love to play on the ground. And so this slick, quick surface is going to make it nice to play into feet and really move the ball. Longmire using his speed to win that one away for Utah Valley. Now Utah Valley trying to regain some chemistry and create something offensively. Nice dummy move on the far side. Here come the Wolverines now. Clever flick on the ball. Nice touch. There's a shot blasted high and outside. Yeah, you see Zach Moss flying in there. Had a great dummy to be able to attack that space. Um, holds on to it maybe a little bit too long, but fell nicely to Blake Frischnick, who then played Luis Vargas. Ambitious shot on the volley there from about 35 out. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Not bad, you want to test that keeper early. Like I said, they need to come out early and test him, so they're okay with those shots. Um, but uh, maybe look to have a little bit, you know, closer angle on that on that goal, if you will. And you've never done that, right? <laughs> you know, I definitely did that probably a time or two in my time. Here's Seattle. Seattle, you with the wind up. There's a curler off the crossbar. Utah Valley on their heels at the moment. Early on in the seventh minute, another swinger inside the box. This one scooped up finally by Joe Wheelwright. 
most dangerous moment of the match so far. Seattle, you know, they're going to look for those chances and those little clipping balls. Finds it around the 18, and they see the back post wide open. You know, Will Wright's lucky that that stayed up and uh, didn't dip the last second. It almost looked like he was he was frozen, not sure if he, if he missed it in the lights or anything. But normally with his positioning, he would be able to have better positioning. And speaking of positioning, Utah Valley trying to position themselves offensively. Frischnick goes down in the box. Referee doesn't call anything, says get back up. Yeah, right call there by the referee. Frischnick does a great job to beat the first left back, get around, takes him on that left angle, didn't really have anyone to pass to or an angle to shoot. Uh, looks to draw the foul, maybe a little bit uh, of a bump there at the hip, but I don't think anything serious enough to call PK. Good decision there by the referee. And Chris Greer, the referee, right after that, just had a talk, a quick stern talking to a fresh next day, and pretty much, I don't want to see any more of that. Yeah, you'll see, you know, they become more serious about that, about the flopping in the box, especially if you're trying to draw a PK. You know, that'll be a stern warning and probably, you know, give you a yellow card, usually. Still scoreless here in the first half. Early on, eighth minute, almost halfway over. And so far, Seattle U had, has had the best chance. A curler from about 25 out, it hit the top of the crossbar. And Utah Valley will have a goal kick. Will Wright will try and reset things from his point of view. Yeah, you see as Will Wright takes his time, it was exactly what I was thinking, that this has been a little fast paced in the first eight minutes rivalry match, you know, energy's high. I think these guys are gonna try to settle the ball down a little bit, they need to. UVU needs to keep more possession of the ball, get the ball on the ground, develop a rhythm, to then attack and have patience with the space available. So, we'll see if UVU can uh, keep themselves composed and do that. Nice tackle take away there by Buxton. And I believe a foul was called on that tackle. Yeah, interesting. I think we had the angle that it showed that he got all ball. Maybe, you know, came through the player a little bit to knock him off balance, but nothing dangerous for a foul, I wouldn't believe. But ref saw otherwise. Wheelwright sending this one toward the center logo. Seattle U dancing around with it. Avi looked good. Ani. On it with those bright cleats, wearing that captain's band for the Red Hawks. Now Udritz. Ruiz and company. Rivas, now back toward the middle. Dispossessed momentarily by Utah Valley. Wolverines win themselves a foul right back and a free kick. Yeah, you saw as Seattle did a good job to find the space in the middle, had one, had their 10, you know, check into that and receive the space or receive the ball. And uh, not a very good defending or good spacing there for the center mids for UVU. But Austin Buxton does a great job to read that and slide in and poke that ball away. Carter Johnson draws the foul. Frischnick trying to claw his way to the ball, has an opening, gets towards the corner. Frischnick. Not enough to get it past Adashi. Off the set piece there, Frischnick does a great job of bringing the ball down. Tries to get around the guys, get around, gets around that right side. Just falls off balance as he goes to hit that. And it's really unfortunate because I think he created the space he needed to to really test the goalkeeper there. So unlucky for UVU. Seattle U. Again, with that early opportunity, Utah Valley has come close within the box. Nothing too dangerous for Adachi, however. Another solid dispossession by the Wolverines, and this one flicked upfield by Brown. Nobody home in green. As I said before, Seattle, they're going to come out in high pressure, and we've seen it every single time the Wolverines get the ball. They have not really connected more than five or six passes. Right. And uh, if they're going to play that way, they're going to have a real hard time developing chances going at Seattle. Seattle, 
doing a great job of that defensively, and they win the ball back and are able to go at UVU. So Seattle doing a great job defensively right now. And they're doing a nice job offensively as well, trying to disrupt that Utah Valley back line, penetrating almost every other minute, it seems like. Tough collision, and looks like Brown goes down, gives a thumbs up to his crowd. And Sergio Rivas from the Red Hawks gives a little friendly tap on the back. As so we yeah, take another you, look at it. You watch here as Mark Brown gets the ball, and Rivas flies in, and uh, as Mark Brown gets the ball away, he might have got a little bit of the, a little bit of the ball, but comes in late and hits his foot there. Nothing serious, but a foul nonetheless. Good call by the ref. Wheelwright continues to take his time. And that fresh haircut of his. Wheelwright with the boot sent towards the top of the box. And a missed touch by Utah Valley gives way back to Seattle U. But one back by Utah Valley. Frischek trying to use that body of his to square up and post up. Now here's Seattle U. And they'll swing it across the pitch, trying to reset and catch Utah Valley off guard as the Cavalry in green tries to come back from being deepened in Red Hawk territory. Now the white shirts, McCoskey, dispossessed by Brown. Now Buxton for Utah Valley. And the Wolverines will play keep away for a moment. Moss with the header. This has been the difference in the match so far. Finally, UVU has, I think, brought the ball down as they're connecting passes. But you expected the Seattle U goalkeeper to just get that out of his box when that came in with, with UVU players running at him but nicely composed, is able to find his outside back there, and they're able to connect four or five passes to get up into UVU's half. So Wolverines, hopefully they can match it, or else they're going to struggle for sure this half. Utah Valley is trying to find that momentum offensively, trying to create those passes, like you said, Thomas. But right now, Seattle U, with that high pressure that you have so frequently talked about, is really pestering them. Late whistle. Ball completely out of play. It will be a Utah Valley throw in. Overhand toss. That pass a little bit too much for Moss to handle. Seattle U comes back, regains possession. And here comes Utah Valley now stepping in front of it. Carter Johnson with the flick. Johnson. Heavily defended by Ruiz. And ultimately dispossessed by Seattle U. And here are the Red Hawks again in Utah Valley territory. Swinging it on to the near side. First time we've actually seen a player fall. And that one fell in favor of Utah Valley. Frischneck trying to create some space here. Frischneck dances around a couple defenders, pulls it back, trying to play a swinging ball in, and Adachi comes up. Moss was lurking, coming in fast on that right side. Yeah, really good idea there by Frischneck. He's able to beat his guy again, really making this right back for Seattle struggle. Cuts it, Zach Moss flying in on the far side. Freshnick wants that one back. That needs to be a little bit, you know, more diagonal in that corner rather than straightforward as the keeper's able to come and collect. But good idea there by Freshnick. You can almost get the sense. I know both teams, they want to strike first, but you can almost get the sense right now that both teams are just kind of feeling each other out. They're seeing what can work, what could potentially work, and what doesn't. And you see out of you right now, 
finding something to work for themselves. And a bad pass falls short. That breakaway opportunity for the Red Hawks. Well, just as we saw there, I think there's a lot of just needless giveaways. For whatever reason, they're not staying composed and they're getting a little bit panicked on the ball rather than connecting passes. You know, they haven't you know, connected as they as they need to be. So both sides really struggling with that right now. Great dispossession this time by Avila Good. Now Seattle U again in Utah Valley Territory. 17th minute in Klein Field in Orem, Utah, the campus of Utah Valley University. Slide through pass, flag stayed down. Wheelwright came out to gobble it up and he quickly unloads to the near side. Brown now, he likes to go to the middle. Trying to find Frischneck with Johnson. Avi look good again for Seattle U. Now Buxton for Utah Valley. Frischnecht and Ani. That'll be a battle to watch throughout the remainder of the night. Frischneck looking like a center in the key, posting up most of the night. Now Brown with the chance. Brown. Buxton now. Try to lay off for Frischneck. It's a good one-two. Passing by Utah Valley quickly taken away, however, by Seattle U. And Rivas with possession for the Red Hawks. McCoskey. Rivas again. Ani. Sent ball now. Seattle U trying to win some possession. Longmire, nice step away from the side. And all the momentum by Noe Meza made him fall over. Pulling out the chair from underneath him. We saw a flurry of shots from either side within the first five minutes and haven't seen one since necessarily. And everything's been played in the center half of this pitch. Yeah, you know, it, 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 you said it exactly right. There were a few moments off the crossbar, that, that, that cross into the near post for UVU. And other than that, you know, the remaining 15 minutes here really just been right in the middle of the pitch. So each side trying to figure out, connect their passes, create those seams. And uh, what I want to see a little bit more from the Wolverines is a little bit more movement, a little bit more deceptive runs because there's been – I think too much of that they connect three passes, break them in, and get in behind a little bit, but then they haven't been deceptive or the runs haven't been, haven't been there really to create any more chances going forward. Like you mentioned, Thomas, maybe a little bit of nerves coming into this game, a lot of pressure because they both teams know that they're number two, number three right behind each other. Utah Valley never beating Seattle. Seattle coming in, winning seven out of eight. Utah Valley, this is the final home series of the 2018 campaign for these players. Saturday being senior night. A little bit antsy here in this first uh, first half at least. Completely. I definitely agree with you that you've seen just, you know, passes that they usually connect or players that are definitely usually more composed on the ball. They're just giving the ball away in, in honestly, easy situations. So I think you're definitely right. They, they feel the hype. They feel the importance of the game tonight, and they know it. Their, their coaches were talking to them about it. They've been talking about it all week, preparing. So we'll see who can settle the nerves quickest, and I think that's going to be the difference maker in this game, in this half for sure. Whoever can settle down, be more composed, especially in and around the 18, that's going to give them better opportunity for chances. Kramanuk's throw misses his teammates, but the ball still ping-ponging around inside Red Hawk territory. Now Johnson with the flick up, trying to find Frischnecht. Frischnecht all over. Frischnecht has back to his right, trying to create some space. 
And Seattle U again with their dark arts of defending. Cast away the spell of Utah Valley. And a battle in midfield now. And a whistle is blown right in the center of the logo. It'll be a free kick for the Red Hawks. Frischnick, I think, has been UVU's best player so far this half. He's done a great job of creating all the chances that they've had. He receives the ball with guys on his back, and he's able to keep it and cut them up to then find other people's feet. The other attackers have got to do a better job keeping the ball, connecting. You see Luis Vargas, he then gets the ball there, and a talented, crafty player, you you expect him to be able to cut him at that top of the 18 and at least get a shot off or create a pass and, and a seam for someone else, but just hasn't been there for the Wolverines this half. And in that same thought, in that same light, you do have to tip your cap off, on the other hand, to Seattle U on the defensive side for disrupting Utah Valley in that offensive set. Absolutely. Absolutely. We talked about it. that <laughs> They've had the upper hand on UVU and always made it difficult for these guys sure. to try and score and compete against them. So I, I don't expect anything less tonight. 23rd minute in Utah. And there you see it again, Utah Valley. Their opponent here, Seattle U, seven of their last eight, tied for third in the WAC standings. And consequences of this game are huge. We'll send a ripple effect throughout this conference. And that should be a Utah Valley corner kick. And Utah Valley would win the first corner kick from either squad. Right as we eclipse into the 24th minute in the first half. Great cross, a ton of space there for, for Blake Leonetti. You maybe saw the heavy legs that he wasn't able to really get in there on the attack quick enough. I would have hoped that he would have fly, flew in a little bit better, created a better angle, or got that cross off a little earlier. I think it was a little bit slow, obviously. Seattle's able to get back in it and uh, get that out for a corner. There's the swinger. And a collision with the keeper. Adachi goes down. Ani a little fired up for Seattle. You're trying to defend his keeper. Did he take a replay? Yeah, you watch it as, as he does a great job of coming up and collecting. And uh, Cromwell Hook comes in a little late, throws a shoulder, but nothing serious. Maybe a talking to, but, you know, Seattle keeper looks to be all right. Adachi, big boy, he'll be all right. <laughs> Adachi, big boy indeed, 6'3", 215 from Pearl City, Hawaii. It looks a little thicker than 215. If he looks 215, then in that pregame, in that stand-up, I probably look about 325. <laughs> Camera always adds weight, right? <laughs> Adachi so with a smile on his face, almost like he, he, he liked the contact. It's like he thrived on it. He said, OK, now I'm woken up. Bring it on. We'll see how that affects Utah Valley going forward. But Seattle U trying to parlay that tenacity in the offensive side. And Ani, who's the one who's chirping at some Utah Valley players, sings that pass upfield. Now there's a, a flurry of passes. McCoskey sends this one to back toward goal. This one flies over goal. Seattle U regains their possession from the elbow. Swung in again. This one not too dangerous at all. Yeah, not a bad look for Seattle, like you said. Flies over the over the uh, goal there, flies into that back corner, does a good job of receiving it, cutting it back on his right and find a player at the top corner of the 18. Puts in that shot cross there, and uh, like you said, I think only a few feet wide, not too far off. Noe Meza takes his first break of the match, and checking in for him is Cody Gibson. Vargas using his head. Foul called. Vargas slow to get up. Nice collision there as Luis was able to get that second ball there. Reads it, gets there quicker, heads it forward. Takes a nice collision there, but up and all right. You see as the bigs now head into the box. Zach Moss on the ball. 
you'll see him try to just clip it right over their heads, maybe on the top of that six here. Almost as if you drew it up yourself. There's the backhand flick and a goal! Utah Valley strikes first. Zach Moss, it's a beautifully driven ball, nice lofted. Right as I said, perfect positioning right on the six. Keeper doesn't know whether to come out and challenge. Chrome Hook gets up. Perfect back headed flick, side netting. Could not have been better, better, better place there. You know, you see Adachi doesn't judge it very well. I think that, you know, that long body could have better, done a better job. He gets turned around and oddly enough is facing his goal when a keeper needs to do a better job of maybe diving sideways to get his fingertips on it. He kind of gets caught in no man's, land, a no man's land, a little awkward, and has his head completely turned facing goal. Not a good look there for Seattle's keeper, but a beautiful flick on there by Cromenhook. Samuel Cromenhook, number 25, I do believe was the one who got his head on it. And just a beautiful, beautiful goal by Utah Valley puts them up 1-0. And that falls into your category. Utah Valley always lethal and deadly when they strike first. Now Seattle U, the Red Hawks, with their ears pinned back, playing from behind. And here is Frischneck with an opportunity for Utah Valley. Frischneck with some speed, going right at the defenders, trying to cut back to his left. And that pass gets a little bit deflected. But Utah Valley trying to add on some more. Yeah, one of my key points to the match, a few of you can come out early, you know, they're 6-0 and on the season when they score first. It's a good statistic to have. It'll be interesting to see how Seattle reacts now. You know, that's been the story for UVU the last couple of games, that they've done a great job on set pieces, corners. Um, they've struggled a little bit to create chances in front of goal on the ground and, and in the, you know, speed of play of the game. but. They've done a fantastic job on capitalizing on their chances on set piece, and I think that's Kromerhook's second or third goal in the season off of set pieces. So you send the bigs forward, it's going to be dangerous. That is Kromerhook's second goal of the season, and both of those coming, like you said, off of set pieces. And I was, I was literally just going to say that before you pretty much drew a diagram as to exactly what Moss was going to do right there. And we know that back in, against UTRGV, when Utah Valley started this five-game win streak, it was set piece. Set pieces was what, what the difference maker between between those two ball clubs. And now we see on the other side, Seattle U earns a corner, their first corner of the match. And Seattle U always dangerous from their set pieces as well. They're trying to equalize this one. A little scuffle in the box. A blown whistle by Chris Greer, the head referee. And the whistle, play on. In swinger right at wheel right. Didn't even have to move. And there's a quick outlet pass to a streaking Vargas. Vargas applying pressure. And Adachi will get this one back with ease. And Seattle can breathe. Yeah, you want to get your team up quick, and especially if you got a player, you know, a nice outlet to be able to get there. Will Wright's got to do a better job of finding Luis Vargas' feet there. Way too far into the center. That needs to be more diagonal where he can actually go and collect. So, again, unneeded error there by UVU. And give Seattle another chance to go at him. You're starting to see Seattle now really trying to put these little runs of one or two guys stringing forward, trying to catch Utah Valley's defense off guard. There's a ball sent in, trying to find Frischneck. Johnson with a nice flick, nice dummy to Buxton. Buxton relays it back. Oh, look at the skill. Frischneck. Here comes Utah Valley now with numbers. The layoff for Moss. Moss with the in swinger. Kicked out by Ani. Ani, the big defender, coming in to boot that one away. 6'4", 185. The senior from Arlington, Washington, says, not right now. 
and a throw in for Utah Valley. Yeah, you'll watch the long throw as Chroma Hook steps up. He's gonna, again, almost create another set piece for here for UVU with this long throw. Big, long two-handed throw. Ani rises up with the header. Vargas chests it down. Who looked like Connor Noblat, one of the recent subs, just lost his footing and went down. And the referee signaled a foul on Vargas as Vargas was streaking by. Yeah, definitely physical there, you know. Luis Vargas receives that ball and looks to push it around him. But uh, I didn't think anything of it. I thought they did a good job. Yeah, they're fighting for position. Seattle guy, you know, is able to slide in there. But, man, I don't know if I agree with the referee on that one. Now here's Seattle U, no block. Avila good. Now down to the near side, McCoskey. Avila good. Sent this one in towards the box. Very lucky that that one was not put in the behind the net. A little miscommunication there between both Seattle U attacking players. And Utah Valley dodges one there. I believe it's finally called off sides. Uh, that previous cross, that first cross where Seattle had the opportunity to score there, I think was off sides and finally called. But you watch as Kromanuk was in good position to defend, but Carter Johnson got caught ball watching. It, Sam was trying, was having to guard two guys right there and almost fell. Mm. I thought that was going to be a tap in the back of net. Great opportunity for Seattle. UVU and Carter Johnson, they have got to do a better job of following their guys and staying goal side or else Seattle you know, could have been on the board there easily. We definitely know in the next 15, 16 minutes or so as we go to break that Greg Moss will be talking with his boys about that one. And it's very easy to do to get caught ball watching when you have a goal already underneath the belt. When it's 0-0, zero, zero, you're, more, you're more apt to be ready on your toes. And it's definitely something that Coach Greg Moss does not want his club to do is, is fall back in that lackadaisical frame of mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've talked about it all night. A, a team like Seattle, you have to you know, be on your toes and be 100% focused every moment of the game. If not, it's those little moments in soccer that you're not focused, you're not in good position where you need to be. You're going to get caught off guard, and they're going to expose you for it. It's a wonderful play to keep that one in by Seattle U. Unfortunately, nobody home on the back end. Great hustle by Cody Gibson. Keep that one in play. Now Frischnecht. Frischnecht plays it back to Vargas. Another collision between Vargas and, and a Seattle U defender. This time it's Declan McGlynn, the team's leading scorer. There is Brown for Utah Valley. Felix. Vargas, now Johnson. Now Moss. Johnson with a nice flick. Flag is up on the far side, however. Moss just a share, excuse me, a hair passed. Yeah, I like it. It's a good idea there by Luis Vargas. He's able to get it back, and Zach Moss making that diagonal run, you know, right across that back line trying to sneak in. That's a nice curled back into the diagonal away from the keeper. So good thought there by UVU, but like you said, just slightly offside. 34th, excuse me, 35th minute now here in Orem, Utah, on the campus of Utah Valley University. And some players getting tangled up. Brown and McCoskey. It looks like Greg Moss has a couple subs on the next available moment to check back into the game here. Garza and Cerna look to see their first in minutes of action. As I anticipated, with the goal scored, it's really opened this game up a little bit more. Seattle has been forced to push a little higher or leave a couple guys there as outlets to have more of attacking roles and positions. And so it's allowed UVU a lot more space in the center of the park. Carter Johnson, you know, missed touch there. But 
you've watched in the last five minutes as UVU has been able to have a little bit better possession than they had early on in the game. And that can definitely stem from that confidence. It's almost, almost like a, a confident recklessness when you have that one goal lead where on one side you kind of forget about some of the things you should be doing and you end up doing things that you, you wouldn't have done if it was a tie game. Sure. And uh, I think it comes down to that balance. We, we talked about the focus right before this. That, yeah, you want to keep high pressing because a 1-0, one a 1-0 one game, it, you know, it, the, team, the other team's right in it. So Seattle, they're right in this. They can score this. There's so much time left in the game. So UVU has got to do a great job of staying balanced. That, yeah, being a little bit less stressed on the ball, right, having more composure, and uh, they can have those creative moments, but they've got to stay focused. They've got to stay organized and, and stay as a group defensively. They cannot let Seattle have any chances, and Seattle's got to push forward and, and create those chances. They've had a little bit less of the ball this last five minutes. They need to do what they are doing in the first ten minutes, creating the ball or creating chances through the string of passes that they were doing so well in the beginning. Less than 10 minutes of play in the first half. Utah Valley on top, 1-0, thanks to Cromwell Hook's beautiful backheader off of set piece in the 24th minute. And Seattle U trying to find an equalizer before we head to the break. Vargas. A little bit of a careless challenge. Let me take another look at it. Vargas comes in, pressuring. Bad time tackle, deserving foul, but uh, definitely slides in front and catches his ankles. UV does a good job here of clearing the ball. Seattle U quickly throws that one back in play. And quickly dispossessed by Johnson. Johnson getting tangled up with the referee. And fouled in the process. Utah Valley, Vargas on the near side, Brown. Now back to Longmire. Longmire trying to find Felix. This one clipped out of play. It'll be a throw in for Utah Valley and a whole line change. Cerna, Fuchs, Garza, and Vasquez all checking in for the green and white. Leo Fuchs will come up top for Austin Buxton, and uh, as well as Garza will come in for, Bra or for Blake Frischnick. They'll be more in that attacking role. Zaire Vasquez will fly out to that right side for Zach Moss, and Diego Serna will sit right in the middle of the park playing that eight position. So, and I like this change with Diego Serna in the middle. They struggled, like I said, early on of really connecting passes, and Diego is the type of player really composed, never feels high pressed, almost in moments to where you think he needs to get rid of the ball a little quicker. He likes to hold on to it and slow the game down. So I like him coming in there and I think he's gonna do a great job of, of keeping that center of the park composed and connecting passes for the Wolverines the rest of the half. Speaking of slowing things down, Looks like head referee Chris Greer is coming over to the Seattle U bench and having a talking to with head coach Pete Fewing. And Greer resumes his position out on the pitch. Whistle is blown, and here comes the two handed toss by Cromenhook. Into the box almost. Flicked in by Felix Adachi. Doing well to punch that one away. Cromenhook trying to come back from behind to keep it in play. And he does somehow. And that one is eventually called. Yeah, I was going to say, if they didn't call that one out of bounds, they definitely missed that one. Very delayed whistle. You watch as that ball, great throw in, dangerous. 
And uh, Alec Felix almost gets his second header goal in the last two games. You watch his Cromen hook and Alec Felix doing a great job uh, of winning those headers and creating chances. And uh, you watch the foul here. Brown got a booking, a yellow card in the 39th minute. And head referee Chris Greer just giving a verbal warning. Looks like he just got done giving a verbal warning to Pete Fewing, and now he's turned around giving a verbal warning to Greg Moss. Yeah, he, he's definitely setting the tone for the rest of the half of the game that he doesn't want to hear any more from either of the coaches and uh, wants to settle the game down a little bit with Mark Brown coming in. You know, not that hard, but Clifford may be the back of his back of his heels or calves there. So referee wanting to keep control of this one. Yeah, in, a, in a rivalry match, it's always good to have a little intensity, a little heat, but you definitely want to keep that uh, all under control. And so far, nothing, nothing blatant, nothing malicious on either team. But uh, Chris Greer does want to put his foot and put a stamp on it and just make sure that he can snuff out anything before anything even happens. Seattle U with about a little over five minutes to play here in this first half, trying to find that equalizer. Again, Croman Hooks, back header, the difference maker in the 24th minute for Utah Valley. And you can see the back line for Seattle U almost a little bit limpy and uh, trying to catch their breath as they've been on their heels for the majority of this first half as this one goes out of play. It will be a Utah Valley ball. Particularly, I'm looking at defender Nathan Ani for Seattle U. Very, very slow, taking his time, and he keeps keeps checking that that left knee at times. It looks like. So we'll see if that affects his play later on. Yeah, and that would be tragic for Seattle U. You know, he's uh, you know one of the captains and uh, really holds that defense down and. Uh, has been an absolute stud for Seattle for the last few years. I remember playing against him and uh, when he was a young player coming in for Seattle. And I remember him starting and play, playing almost every moment since he, since he got to the university. So he's a great player and uh, someone you look to lead the Seattle team. And like we've talked about, make it difficult on uh, Frischnick and the other UVU players up front. Hopefully he can stay healthy the rest of the match. Yeah, you always want to play your opposition at their at their peak. Brown with that yellow card in his back pocket now. And he gets a shove from behind. Took a hard fall collision when he hit the ground and his looked like his armband fell off. Or something. Maybe he's just I was getting the yellow from the armband confused with his flowing locks of hair when he hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't think any band was flying, but just gets tripped up a little bit. Flick up into the box. Ani heads it back into the comfort of his own teammates. And dispossessed by Utah Valley. Wolverine's trying to strike right back. Clever ball movement by the Wolverines. No sir, no sir, no sir. Now Felix with it. And the ball eventually swung towards that top of the box. Good idea by Utah Valley. And eventually kicked and snubbed out of play by Seattle U. Good cross there by the Wolverines. You love that craftiness from Diego Serna as he notices that there's some space in and behind. Puts that flick over the top of his head and uh, you watch as Garza almost gets on the end of it. So Johnson will do the corner kick honors. Utah Valley trying to tack on another set piece opportunity before the first half ends. Ball's up. There's an opportunity for Utah Valley. Adachi with the save and another missed opportunity for Utah Valley. Beautiful cross there by Carter Johnson. It's that nice driven. And Alec Felix, he loves those as he's scored a goal in the last match. He's able to fly in there and pressure it. 
falls into the back post to Leo Fuchs, puts a nice hard shot on it, comes and, and the goalkeeper makes a great save. And uh, I think it's Longmire falls right to his foot and he's got to do a better job of keeping that down on frame. Should be in the back of the net, should be 2-0 for the Wolverines right now. Missed opportunity and uh, Seattle dodges a bullet there again on dangerous corners and set pieces. Utah Valley trying to continue their dominance on those set pieces, trying to take every advantage and every opportunity that they can to capitalize on one of their strongest points. 44th minute, Utah Valley still with possession. Garza, Garza with Brown on the near side. Elects to go up to Johnson. Johnson, hard push in the back from Ani. Ani disagrees. And it'll be another free kick and another set piece opportunity for Utah Valley. Yeah, either disagrees or frustrated with himself. Carter Johnson did a nice job of winning position there and sliding in right as Ani starts flying in. Another set piece. You know, hopefully Carter can put it on that back corner, that six. Good position for UVU to have another opportunity to header on frame. Referee signals time. And again, Pete Fuming, fuming. And another yellow card is issued to yeah, you, Seattle U. You saw as Carter Johnson was asking for distance. The ref then asked him to move and give him the 10 yards that he wants. And uh, if I heard it right from the sideline here, he's yelling back at the referee, that's his job to walk that off. And uh, because of the, the confrontation, the talk back to the referee, he's given a card. All right, so in the final seconds here of this first half, Johnson's in swinger. Missed its target, but still bouncing around. Johnson, another opportunity. Sent this one in towards that back post. Nobody home, not in time. Kroman have tried to have a slide tackle with a little flick on it. Couldn't quite get to it. Yeah, good idea there. He could have maybe put that a little bit more inside or taken a little off it. But nice opportunity. UVU needs to play some hard defense here with less than 30 seconds left in the half. And Rivas with a touch that he would like to have back. Too hard. That one slips by all of his teammates charging forward. That one goes out of play and Wheelwright will definitely take his sweet time with the final 10 seconds in this first half, and he just boots this one straight over our heads over the media tent, and time will tick away. And that horn signals the end of the first half. Utah Valley coming up clutch off the back header. Cromanhook strikes in the 24th minute to give Utah Valley a 1-0 lead at the break. Yeah, I, I think that Rivas and Seattle Definitely frustrated going in the half here. They had that moment with 20 seconds left in the half and kind of just sprays it without control out of bounds there. So my my key point, I think, for Seattle, they've got to be better composed how they were in the first 10 minutes. They were dominating the possession and creating that. So we'll see how they do this half. Welcome to the field. Our YouTube team. I decided to go to college to further my education and define my purpose in the world and be a part of something much bigger than myself. I wanted to set up the best possible future for myself, both academically and athletically. I try to learn from everyone, whether that be professors, my teammates, or other student athletes. I try to see everyone as an opportunity to learn. Everyone has a story to tell, and I think there's a moral and something you can learn from it.
about the car shopping experience at Murdoch Hyundai that has everyone talking. Maybe it's the safety inspections or the car washes for life. It could be the price match guarantee, or maybe it's just the way you're treated. Come fall in love in Linden, Logan, and Murray at Murdoch Hyundai. Your no regrets dealer. In 2009, there was a tsunami that uh, struck Samoa on this very uh, location that we're sitting on, where several of those that are in this village, most of the, the lives that were taken were lost right here in Lanomanu. And it was a sad day. As we heard about the devastation here in uh, Samoa, we felt like as a team that we wanted to be able to see what we can do to be able to help out. We started with the goal of of trying to bring a 20-foot container of supplies that could help with some of the families in the various villages that were affected. And we were just overwhelmed with support and donations and ended up bringing a 40-foot container. We brought two containers this year, and this is the first time we've ever brought two. We're pretty excited about it. We had such generous donors um, back in the States. And what we would do at UVU is we'd pack them all into these boxes and we'd stack these pallets seven feet high, and we'd wrap them and we'd put them into the container and then we came here and we were unloading them. We didn't really know what we were doing with this stuff until we got to go to Pesenga and the victim support group. The victim support group that we went to was a very humbling experience, I would say. Um, it was just a bunch of children, boys and girls, who had been mistreated by some family members and so they had gone there to live and to stay. I think I could speak for most of the girls that it was probably like the coolest thing ever. We got to paint their nails, the girls' nails, and we got to give them gifts that other people from back home had made for them and it was it was so sweet seeing them because all of them just appreciated us so much and they needed so much love from us and it was just so cute to hang out with them and play games and give our love to them as well. And I remember when we're saying bye to them, they all the girls just started singing this goodbye song to me. And I think it was so great to see how grateful they were for us just being there and the service that we were giving them has really impacted me more than um, anything. It just really showed me that all the work that we were doing in Utah when we were like, what are we doing? What What is this for? You, you don't really have a perspective until you come here and you see what you're actually doing with this stuff. I think that I have definitely taken a lot of things that I have in my life for granted and coming here I if just my eyes have been opened. I think that I knew that was gonna happen, but you don't really understand it until you come here and you actually get to experience it for yourself. Sam is such a giving person, and I think that it's cool to see um, his ideas and his ideas come to life being here on this trip. It's awesome to see all the people he knows, and he comes here every year, so some li even little kids would recognize him and just run up to him as soon as they see him because they know the kind of person that he is and how giving he is. My coach is very good at thinking of others and just serving wherever he can and I feel like that's something that I don't naturally do and so that's something I've definitely learned from this trip is to look for ways to serve those around me in any way that I can. This team right here, they're very hardworking and uh, caring for one another and so I hope that with some of these experiences that we've had will help them be able to just continue to do that and uh, thinking of others first. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from award-winning business and STEM to performing arts programs, there's a place for you. A place for you. A place for you at UVU. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. 
Utah has embodied the spirit of industry. From the first transcontinental railroad to the first department store, we've led the way. As part of the Murdoch Auto Team, we're proud to carry on this tradition. That's because when we say you are the heart of our business, it's more than just a slogan. It's our commitment to the values we all hold dear with no regrets. You've got to come see why you truly are the heart of our business. Murdoch Hyundai of Linden, part of the Murdoch Auto Team. Click MurdochHyundaiLinden.com. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from award-winning accounting to marketing and entrepreneurship programs, there's a place for you at Utah Valley University. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. Oh, hey, you got one of those insurance apps too? You know how this thing works? No, sorry. Not an app, it's my agent. In this moment. No, I'm fine, thanks. It's good to know you have a trusted, independent auto owner's insurance agent who's there when you need them. Great. Man, I gotta get one of those. Auto Owners Insurance, the no problem people. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owners insurance agency, supports UVU athletics. When I was hired as the new coach at UVU, I knew that if we were going to win games, we'd have to have fans in the seats. I'm not much of a marketing guy, but I have some friends that know a thing or two about it. All right, coach, this is all about face to face interaction. Was actually pretty good. If this whole basketball thing doesn't work out, you should give me a call. If you're looking to earn money this summer, stop by the Vantage Marketing booth on the concourse during our games or visit choosevantage.com. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life. No matter your interests. From award-winning music. To acting. To theater programs. There's a place for you. A place for you. A place for you at UVU. A place to engage. To rise. To succeed. To become. You're watching UVU TV. Welcome back to Clyde Field on the campus of Utah Valley University. Utah Valley, as you see it right there with a one to nothing goal lead over the visiting Seattle U Redhawks and that goal coming courtesy of Croman Hook's 24th minute backheader off of the set piece and in the first couple minutes Thomas we had a flurry like we talked about of goal of opportunities at least shots from either squad and then it kind of just fizzled out towards the middle to latter half of that first half into the middle section of this pitch, but as you can see here, Utah Valley putting some pressure on Adachi, and then here is that BD, that back header. Boom, right there from Croman Hook. Yeah, you know, like you said, early on there were a few chances there. UVU dodged a bullet with a, a, a shot off the crossbar, and then uh, after that, really after the goal, UVU, that's been their best threat is their set pieces you know in the last few games and so tonight no different that key that they needed to come out and score early and make it difficult for Seattle the rest of the game uh, UVU has had the upper hand with shots shots on goal and uh, they need to continue that and that's been the difference that Seattle it hasn't created enough chances you talked about that there was a lot of possession right in the middle of third a lot of giveaways back and forth but really nothing with a purpose and uh, nothing too dangerous on frame either side other than the few set pieces that UVU had in that first half. Well, Pete Fewing is no slouch whatsoever, and we know that he has had success at that program for a good reason, or two, or three, or four, or however many reasons. Anybody up there in that area can figure out why he has been so successful. And I will highly doubt that we will see a flat Seattle U Red Hawks team when we come out in the second half, right after this, here on UVU TV. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? It doesn't matter your situation in life. 
no matter your interest. Whether your first choice or second chance, there's a place for you. Place for you. Place for you at UVU. Place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. Did you know that over 43 million Americans struggle with mental health problems annually? 43 million. That's one in five adults. Did you know that there's one death by suicide in the United States every 12 minutes? Did you know that suicide takes the lives of over 40,000 Americans each year? Over 40,000 mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, sisters, and friends. Did you know that you can help reverse this trend? If you or someone you know is struggling with mental illness, don't keep it to yourself. You're watching UVU TV. Willie the Wolverine and Earth, Wind and Fire in the background here, trying to get the crowd that's here fired up for the second half. Again, Utah Valley known for their 12th man, as they call it here, but uh, a little bit of a different look tonight because it's fall break. Do you want to emphasize this is not normally how a Utah Valley home game will be very much more raucous. We do have some flag bearers, as you can see, towards the middle of your screen on the far side, waving around their flags. I did uh, a women's game last week, and we had the flag bearers get a talking to from the official because they waved their flag too close to the pitch. Tonight, again, fall break, and school will be back in session, but Utah Valley right now in the driver's seat with a one nothing lead over Seattle U and the Red Hawks, but I expect nothing but higher intensity, higher octane in this next 45 minutes. Yeah, like you mentioned, usually there's a much larger crowd. UVU's been ranked and uh, come in 16th and 15th in the country and in record attendance uh, throughout the years since their inaugural season in 2014. But uh, there has been no lack of energy and no lack of intensity in this game and it's not going to change. Seattle, they're going to come out with a point to prove this half to get themselves back in the game and uh, try to come on top and win this game and knock UVU off that second position so that they can move into it going into the WAC tournament. And uh, UVU, they've got to do a great job of defending and staying, uh, you know, defending as a group and we'll see how they do this half. They need to create a few more chances and definitely put one or two in the back of the net if they want any type of you know, comfort against a team like Seattle U. Seattle U attacking as we see it and as you see it this half from right to left in Utah Valley in their green home uniforms and a wheel right with, to our left and attacking down south to the right-hand side. Wheel right made a couple nice saves. He got a lucky break early on when Seattle U made that nice cross off the top of the crossbar early on, about the fourth or fifth minute. And ever since then, Wheel right has had really nothing to worry about. Adachi 
he has been as clutch as he can be. I mean, nothing really you could do on that crumb and hook backhead off that set piece, but he's had a couple nice point blank saves, and he's kept Seattle you right in this game. Yeah, I think you said it right. Both goalkeepers haven't been tested too much. Um, Adachi maybe a, l a little more so, as UVU's had a few more chances and four shots on goal. And, uh, yeah, not a lot I don't think he could have done against that Sam Cromenhook Kr 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 flick. But uh, he did get caught in a weird position facing goal that he maybe could have done better diving sideways. But UVU doing a decent job to keep possession this half, as I say that. Gives it up to Seattle. So should be a fun half ahead of us. Seattle U again in there, all whites with the red lettering and the black numbers, trying to gain some offensive momentum. Now to the near side, moving it upfield. And creating some space of their own. Nice flick, this one chested down nicely by Leonetti. All safe, says head official Chris Greer. And there's a wide shot. Very, very optimistic blast from distance that missed. But you have to, if you are Seattle U, it's about that time where you gotta start taking those chances. Absolutely, they've gotta start creating chances. And you know, even if it may seem a little difficult from about 40 out there, They've got to try and test their luck with Joe Wilwright. Um, he's been absolutely solid the last six games in that goalkeeper position before, you know, a few injuries with uh, Mitch going down, Mitch Jensen with uh, his knee and uh, with the other goalkeepers, but he's really proven a, a point that he deserves to be in goal. Randall trying to swing that one back in, shanked off of the outside of his foot, a little too much. And that one will be a goal kick for Wheelwright. Yeah, just as we talked about, Seattle's got to do a better job of, of being more composed. He needed to put curl that into the box and instead goes off the outside of his foot out of bounds. Big booming kick from Wheelwright. And a good job by Leonetti to let this one go out of play. Nice two-handed overthrow. Frischnecht. Such poise and composure for the big fella. And Leonetti again might seem a little bit unrecognizable with the new fresh haircut. And the usual starters back in the game for Utah Valley. Frischnecht. Finding some space, nobody home on the backside. And this one will trickle out of play. Frischnick again doing what you said he does best, using that body, creating that space, and having that composure for that big body of his, who's able to win that one for Utah Valley. Yeah, Frischnick does a great job there of getting the touch. He's able to clip it right around the defender, fly in and beat him to that cross. Not unfortunate no one on the back post. Maybe put too much on it, but uh, Run out, runs out of bound for what I believe should be a Seattle throw. I think they finally have a right sending someone over for it. A lot of confusion at the moment. Chris Greer, the head official, signaled his tap in his chest as to say, my bad, that should have been my, you know, I should have had that right the first time. Stopped the clock for a second, now the clock's back up. Ball going back and forth between Utah Valley, Seattle, out of play. Now it's eventually back to a goal kick for a dodge in Seattle U. Fiftieth minute here in Orem, Utah, on the campus of Utah Valley University. Again, Utah Valley on top, one nothing, thanks to Croman Hook's back header in that twenty-fourth minute. Seattle U trying to regain some composure. Utah Valley now with the opportunity. Here's Frischnecht. And Vargas with the class. Couldn't quite keep it. And Adachi with the quick throw. Coleman Hook. All right. Sorry, Frischnick. Again, the key player for the Wolverines and has been th the entire season. Able to turn way too much time. He's able to throw a scissor and get past the Seattle defense. Here's a good buildup by the Red Hawks now. 
Wheelwright with a kick save. The best look Seattle U has had all evening. And now Seattle U still with possession, trying to find that equalizer. And that one deflected out of play. Wheelwright keeping his composure, staying his ground, and is able to keep that clean sheet. Huge opportunity there for Seattle U as it fell nicely to that forward's foot. He's able to take the touch in, and Will Wright does an incredible job reading that, flying off his line to make that save. But, uh, yeah, dodging a bullet here is that Blake Leonetti doesn't clear it right, and Will Wright does a great job reading that, flying to, to get his feet there and set as it goes off his knee. Initial corner by the Red Hawks kicked off Utah Valley out of play, so another corner is awarded. Another whistle is blown. And it looks like Chris Greer is going to have a talking to with, with Wheelwright. And Wheelwright's a little confused as to why. Oh, now players changed. And Buxton is the one getting the talking to. No, no cards given, at least. McGlynn, that'll take the corner here. He's one that almost just had that shot. Almost had that goal, I should say. Another deflection. Very dangerous moment here for Utah Valley. Don't want to let up. Trying to keep their composure. Seattle U trying to get under their skin as much as they can. And here's the swinging ball. Up in the air. This one flicked away momentarily by Utah Valley. Still in the box, however. Opportunity for Seattle U. Another ball saved. Hands were raised, and the flag is officially up on the far side. Late, late whistle. Beautiful corner across here. Seattle's able to get up and, and really challenge it. Falls in the box, and uh, UVU lucky. The number five is off sides there. And I believe that was Connor Nova that it fell right to his foot, but just unfortunately off sides for, for the Red Hawks. Longmire with the strong head. And you can see the intensity and the pace really start to pick up now for Seattle U. This one kept in play very nicely. Moss in a battle on the near side. McGlynn and Moss go down. Moss is down holding his right ankle on his back, and he's holding his head. Yeah, Chromahook did a great job there. Nice timed tackle. Flies in and gets, gets the ball, and uh, you see is McGlynn and then Zach go for a 50-50 tackle. And uh, you know, I believe Moss might, might have actually fouled him the first time. Ref sees the second as Moss able to touch the ball away and McGlynn gets him. But uh, frustrating for the Seattle coach and the Red Hawks as they believe they should have had the first call there. Cromenhook with a big boomer, top of the box. Felix for Utah Valley with a back heel, trying to find Buxton. Bucks it down towards that end line, dispossessed. And Vargas takes it right back for the Wolverines. Longmire likes to go all the way back to wheel right for the reset. McGlynn trying to apply that pressure. Wheel right boots it upfield anyway. Vargas thought about doing that slide tackle, but no, the last time he tried that, he got a foul call. And this one kicked out of play by Brown. Quick throw in by Seattle U. McCoskey will do it. 55th minute here in Orem, Utah. Utah Valley still on top, 1-0. Seattle U trying to find that equalizer. Had an opportunity couple minutes ago. Wheelwright standing his ground, saving that clean sheet. But now Seattle U trying to knock on that door yet again. That ball had a lot of pace coming off it, bouncing off a couple defenders for Utah Valley. Nice body control by the Wolverines. Still in, U in the Seattle U possession. And the urgency 
for the Red Hawks, really starting to come through. Johnson. And a big boot by Kroman Hook. And there's a flick of field trying to find McGlynn. And the flag is stays down, but official. Blowing a whistle from behind. As we take a look at that last chance, that last opportunity, bouncing off of Leonetti. Yeah, another great look there by McGlynn. Almost his second opportunity for a goal. Fell to him again with a ton of space to then go at him with his left foot. Looks to pick out that back post, and Blake Leonetti does a good job of getting in front of it. But this last five minutes, Seattle has definitely had the better half of possession. So if they can keep this up, they're going to create more and more of those opportunities against the Wolverines. And Johnson gets fouled just outside the box. Clever flick on play by Frischnecht. Good body control by Johnson. Gets Utah Valley a very, very tasty opportunity of a set piece as we take another look at it. Great run there by Carter Johnson. Good vision by Blake Frischnick. Carter Johnson feels the defender on his back, slows down just enough to draw that foul. And uh, this will be a great chance for the Wolverines. We'll see what they elect to do here. They've got three on the ball. They might have a play set, or one will just look to hit on frame or put that across. Definitely a dangerous and uh, tough position to defend. Wolverines looking to add to their goal total. Trying to put Seattle U really on their heels this time. For about the 19 and a half, maybe the 20. Buxton and Frischneck, two leading goal scorers with four goals apiece. Talking it over. Head referee Greer doing some teaching on how to properly contain yourself with the wall here. And we await the whistle. Frischnicht with the goal! Utah Valley 2, Seattle nothing! Absolutely beautiful driven ball here by Frischnicht. Buxton goes over the top of it just to throw him off a little bit. Frischnick comes and smashes this back post. Nice curling hit right into the back corner. We had a beautiful angle on it. Just, again, Frischnick coming up big for his team. Set pieces and corners. You cannot allow the Wolverines chances in, on these set pieces in front of the 18. They have just defined it that it is a part of their game, and they are going to capitalize every chance they get. Frischnick with just the absolute composure that your number nine has to have. He's gonna be the leading goal scorer on the season. If he continues at this pace, he should be, put it, be putting himself in a good position for winning WAC honors, all team honors, and uh, you know fighting for national recognition at that point. Blake Frischnick, as you saw right there, team leading fifth goal on the season. And if you didn't think the Utah Valley was fired up after that first goal, you better check your pulse because right now you can virtually see the energy and the steam coming off of every player standing up on their bench right now. 2-0 is that goal lead, and Utah Valley looking like they want a little bit more. Yeah, you got to absolutely love the confidence of Frischnick. He's felt it, and uh, he dealt with a little bit of injury last year, which was unfortunate because you knew that he had a talent that would help this team as they struggled last year. But as he's become healthy, he has been an absolute dominant presence in this conference and made it difficult for all these teams. You can't give him those opportunities because he's just becoming so good at those. He loves those opportunities and has done so well with them. Uh, like you said, I think this has given the Wolverines oh, great momentum. But as I say that, they draw an absolute, almost identical foul, identical position for the Red Hawks right now in front of goal. And a little bit of gamesmanship here. 
tension starting to increase. You saw Connor Noblet wanting that call to be a penalty kick. He thought he was fouled inside the box. But Chris Greer says is right outside the box. This one a little bit closer than Frischneck's was. But nevertheless, still a dangerous, dangerous spot. Utah Valley still trying to keep that shutout. Yeah, right on the edge of the 18. This is going to be a testing uh, moment for Joseph Wheelwright. If they can put this on frame at this angle, they can either curl this into the near post or try to hit it and smash it at that back post, make Joseph have to, you know, make a quit anticipation dive or, uh, you know, be leaning in the right direction as he watch these guys line up to hit it. Again, two on the ball, one sitting on that near post to throw the keeper off, test his vision. Ayala and Rivas. Ayala off the ball, Rivas. It will be Ayala, and this one takes a flick off of Utah Valley, off the head of the wall. And it will be another corner kick on the other side. Unfortunate for the Red Hawks, he's got to hit that a little bit higher. He, he does. He does well with the thought to curl that with his left foot into that back post, but uh, he's got to put it a little bit higher. In swinger with some pace, completely missed his target. And it will be a goal kick for Wheelwright. As we have approach the hour mark. Utah Valley on top of Seattle U, two goals to nothing. Utah Valley trying to do something that they have not done since joining the Western Athletic Conference, and that is beat Seattle U. Seattle U 6-0 all time versus Utah Valley. And Utah Valley right now trying to change that and keep that momentum and that winning streak alive. Still got 30 more minutes to play in regulation, but right now looking very comfortable and very confident in their position right now. Yeah, they're in a great spot, but uh, like you said, there's a lot of lot of game to be played left. And Seattle U, they've been known to be super deceptive and create some chances. With 30 minutes, they have plenty of time to do that. Felix and Croman Hook almost take each other out. And this one is tipped down to play. And it will be a Red Hawk throw in. And it looks like a couple substitutions will be made. Garza and Fuchs will check in for Moss and Frischneck. Head coach Greg Moss looking like one of the crew, looking like another college kid, giving bro hugs, high fives, and daps to Frischneck coming off the pitch. It's one of the reasons why the teams and the players love playing for him. They say he just gets it. And here comes Utah Valley now with another opportunity lurking. Good ball moving now, Leonetti. Garza now plays it back. Serna. Inside the box, headed down. Nothing doing for Akachi. Pretty good look there by Diego Serna. That's the right thought to be able to hit that. A lot of time, you got two or three guys sitting on the back post there. If he could have dri driven that a little bit harder, put that a few more feet into the box, I think it would have given Carter Johnson a better opportunity as he looked to get his head that on that and put it in the back post. Ani, it's a name we have not called in a while for Seattle U. Now Johnson for Utah Valley, the Wolverines. Leonetti, Garza calling for the ball, wanting that ball for Utah Valley instead. This one played, trying to go over Ani's head, trying to find Buxton. It looks like Johnson fell down, lost his footing. a really good thought there. Buxton was on and was 
getting past that left back. But uh, the captain, Ani, does a great job of coming up and winning that header. But uh, just barely, as that was almost over his head, and Buxton would have been in on goal. Ani being pestered by Johnson. Another giveaway by the Red Hawks. Buxton showing off that speed. Dispossessed by Ani, but right back to Johnson. Brown. Felix going to swing it all the way back to the near side. Leonetti trying, just can't get it. Big two-handed toss coming back in. Carter, Johnson, trying to push, getting some encouragement from his own bench. And some shaking heads on the Utah Valley bench as they know that they missed an opportunity there. A little bit of hesitation gave way for Seattle U to come right back into their defensive spot. Yeah, Johnson had so much space and time there. You could hear the the coaching staff from the Wolverines screaming, go at him. They want that from their freshman. He's got to have more confidence as he receives that, and he's got space. Doesn't matter you're 2-0 up. Go at these guys and create the chances if those opportunities are there. There, here's Seattle U. There's a shot right at Will Wright. He scoops it up with ease. The two hopper looked more dangerous right off the boot than it, than it really was. And I do believe that that shot by Orlando Neto has been their first shot on goal in quite some time. Yeah, that's been the story of the match so far for the Red Hawks. They've had decent possession. They're able to collect it in front of their 18. Few different opportunities there. First shot on frame. But, you know, with two hops, it's not really going to test Will Wright with that type of positioning. He definitely wants that one back to be able to hit it with a little bit more pace, a little cleaner right in the middle of the ball. Brown, nice piece of defending. Got a little body before he booted that ball away. And they're going to call a foul, I believe, on Connor Noblot. And that will initiate a handful of substitutions for Pete Fewing in Seattle U. Gabriel Ruiz, Westra, and Meza will all check into the game at the next opportune moment for Seattle U. You gotta appreciate Will Wright's distribution as it falls to him again. To be able to catch Seattle off guard, he's a right-footed player, hits almost all of, his, all of his balls with his right foot. He hit that one with his left foot, a nice 40, 50 dri driven yard ball right onto Blake Leonetti's foot. Love that out of your goalkeeper that you can just ping dimes and distribution to be able to you know, really find those open spaces and teammates. A very highly underrated skill set as well. Sixty-sixth minute, Utah Valley on top, two nothing. Utah Valley struck first in the twenty-fifth. Excuse me, the twenty-fourth minute off of Croman Hook's back header, and then the fifty-sixth minute here in the second half, Frischnecht with his team-leading goal. Here's another opportunity for Utah Valley. No whistle calls. Seattle U trying to find some offensive momentum and trying to break free. Felix dispossessing. Now McGlynn. McGlynn has options. Elects trying to play the through ball. And Carter Johnson comes through to take it away for Utah Valley. Again, good opportunity for Seattle. They collect the ball, go out the Wolverines, connect a pass to the top of the 18. Wolverines do a great job of getting back, getting numbers behind the ball, making it difficult for them to, to break them down, find those seams to split them and get them between, and you know, try to 
find some type of space to put a shot on frame. If you, you can do that, they're going to make it difficult in Seattle. But they've got to stay focused as we talked about early on. A little over 20 minutes left to play in regulation. Seattle U right now trying to find some sort of offensive momentum, trying to put together a string of passes that will exceed at least five. Right now they've been dispossessed anytime they get near three or four strings of passes together, and you have to tip your hats off to Utah Valley's defensive back, back line. And Utah Valley's done a fantastic job of shutting down the offensive powers of, Utah, of Seattle U. Honestly, that's kind of been the story of the match on both sides. There really hasn't been a lot of possession, more than five or six passes. Here's Buxton. Buxton going to his left, winds up and fires. Adachi, Superman diving to his left. Good look there by Buxton. Leo Fuchs, great job on the ball. Gets around his defender. Finds Buxton checking to him at the top of the 18. He's got space on his left foot, takes that touch. And again, not far off, few feet off that back post. Good look with his left foot. As he'll step off now to rest a little bit. Taking his spot. Now at the top spot, Leo Fuchs. And some personnel changes moving around for Utah Valley. Nice ball. And Brown somehow, after falling down, was still able to get a boot on it and flick it out of play. And Brown is a little shaken up, and he's slow to get up. Yeah, you watched his mark slid there too early, but then while he's on the ground is able to reach out just enough to get another poke and tackle on the ball to disrupt that. He looks to be holding his wrist. I thought, you know, you, you were afraid that it might have been something that he pulled or strained as he reached out with his leg. He might have got stepped on there with his foot or, I mean, with his hand. But he looks to be okay. And the temperature has significantly dropped since kickoff. And right now, it should be somewhere in the mid to low 50s. 46, excuse me, I beg your pardon, as that ball is swung in and punched down and headed out by Longmire. Chested down now by Seattle U. Yeah, I believe in the beginning of the match, it, the temperature was around 55. Something brewing here for Utah Valley. They have numbers. And Seattle U was able to come back on defense. And a missed opportunity for Utah Valley as they had a two-on-one breakaway. You said it right. I, you know, you like Garza maybe hitting that with the early balls. Zaire Vasquez is flying to the box. But he's such a talented player and crafty player that I think with that space and going one-on-one, -on -one, he really could have gone at that defender and gotten around him for a shot on frame. Nonetheless, receives a corner. Johnson in swinger, headed out easily. And Johnson gets his hand caught in the cookie jar. Another whistle is blown. And Ani elects to take the quick kick. Seattle U still looking for that first goal of the match. Big boot to the far side. Brown staying his ground. This one swung in. Nothing threatening there. And Utah Valley trying to clear it out. Westra with the left boot. Crowman hook, solid defense. This one kept in play. Yeah. 
McGlynn, the goal scorer, team leader with five. Going down towards that end line, cuts back. Swings this one across, top of the box. Nice ball movement, ball control, just barely misses that outside post. Great opportunity there for Seattle U. Absolutely unfortunate that that's not in the back of the net. We watched Connor Noblet. He's been their dangerous player to get around the corner here. He's able to beat Blake Leonetti. Back post, falls to their right wing. Beautiful, crafty touch right over Mark Brown. Brings it down nicely and hits that just maybe a foot wide of that back post. UVU dodges a bullet there. Seattle looks to put themselves back in a position to fight with less than 20 minutes left in this match. Orlando Neto, the one with that missed shot, just barely. And there is definitely a lot of life left in this Red Hawks team. And Leonetti called for the foul. Hard shoulder. 73rd minute here in Orem, Utah. Free kick opportunity for the Red Hawks. Declan McGlynn will do the honors. McGlynn sends this one towards the outside of the box. Headed up and away by Brown. This one slowing down as it gets toward the end line. And it will be a corner kick. Seattle U just trying to set this one up very quickly to catch Utah Valley off guard here. Neto with the in-swinger. Flick on, and another missed opportunity. Will Wright was beaten to that far post by the ball just a, a couple feet wide. With 16 minutes left in this game, UVU has got to do a better job defending. Again, maybe inches away from that back post. Seattle, great couple opportunities here. They're knocking on the door, and they're looking to score and get back in this game. That ball was driven to that near post. No one's sitting there. They're the first ones to get on the end of it. Nice inside touch. Just unlucky that that doesn't go in. And almost has enough time for a couple guys on the back post crashing in there to get a tap in. So absolutely dangerous and great chance there for, for the Red Hawks. Will Wright will take his time. Another big boomer past that midfield logo. Seattle U trying to push up that tempo. Neto on the far side, goes past Brown. Left boot inside the box now. Heavy collision. It looks like Cromanhook got upended. Noah Mesa trying to kick the ball, missed the ball and got Cromanhook. Well, you watch as this comes in. Longmire misses it and then Cromanhook is able to get there before the Red Hawk player, as uh, Seven just looks to do anything he can to get his foot there and put that on frame. Chroma Hook does a good job of getting a poke on it before he then has his legs taken out. Nothing serious, just looking to put a shot on frame and catches Chroma Hook's foot. Good call there by the referee, no card, but a foul. It's just a natural instinct from a fan's perspective when you see a body go flying in the air to give a natural uh, ooh or ah. But that's what we had the beauty of replay for, seeing that there really is no maliciousness to it. Seattle U trying to flick this one in again. Out of play. But yet, within the past six minutes here, Thomas, they have been knocking on the door of Utah Valley. Utah Valley really has to be firing on all cylinders defensively here. Complete momentum switch. You watch this Seattle's opportunity. This is their third. In Swinger trying to have a header towards that near corner was Mesa. Yeah, Mesa likes that near post spot. Again, second corner kick to that near post space. They look to capitalize it on the first one, almost had it. Diving header here, not quite enough on that cross. Difficult to put that diving header on frame as it goes out of bounds for a corner. But like you said, with 15 minutes left in this match, they're knocking on the door and doing everything they can to keep themselves in this match. Besides that fantastic strike on the free kick by Frischnecht, Utah Valley has not had a shot on goal 
And all the momentum offensively is swung into the Red Hawks' favor. And right as I say that, Utah Valley gets a little bit of magic on the offensive side, their own self. Ani doing well defensively against Zaire Vasquez. Big body mismatch there. Ani wins that ball easily. Now here's Seattle U. Good flick on ball. Flag stays down. And trying to play that ball between the legs of the defender was Rivas. And Rivas will take the corner. Another corner with urgency. You saw before they went short early on in the game. They're looking to put it in the box, be as disruptive as possible. Here's the corner kick. Wheelwright punches it, doesn't get a clean grasp on it. Here's McGlynn. McGlynn trying to beat Carter Johnson. Johnson staying his ground. Wins this one back for Utah Valley. Kicks this one upfield. Leonetti trying to get that ball back for Utah Valley, still with Seattle U possession. Rivas controls it. Neto. And Utah Valley with the big boots. And a good clearance and a reset for the Wolverines. You view Alex here to get it out of their, their half, which I understand, but they've got to have better possession. They cannot just keep playing defense and giving it right back to the Red Hawks because they've created way too many opportunities. I loved Ani as he's tracking back. He's able to get back, you know, even with Zaire Va Vasquez with the pace that he has, his big body, he gets in front of that, then connects the pass to create a chance. I think he's going to call a bad throw here. I saw that heel fly up from the other side of the field. But uh, Seattle, you, you, you love the type of fight that they have, and that's what they're going to give these Wolverines to the very last second. A few personnel changes for Utah Valley. Buxton and White checking back in. And it looks like Leo Fuchs will take a breather. Buxton again very dynamic with his speed and his size and Greg Moss hoping that uh, Buxton might be able to cause a little bit more havoc on the offensive side than what we've been seeing in the past couple minutes for Utah Valley and Brown who is still holding that right wrist very gingerly close to his body and his chest as he walks off the field we'll see if he uh, immediately goes to the trainer and he gets taken a look at here yeah as he is giving those high fives as he steps out of bounds too. He even gives it with his left hand, not his dominant <coughs> right hand, excuse me. So, yeah, they pull him to see maybe if they get that hand or wrist taped up that he might have fallen on it to break his fall or, or got stepped on. But uh, White, big freshman, steps in, plays that right back role, and they move Blake Leonetti to that left back position now. Carter Johnson trying to one time that ball out of the air. Splits the uprights. Goes out of play for a goal kick. Pesky defending by Utah Valley gives way to Wolverine possession. Nice flick by Buxton, just a little too fast for Garza. Yeah, that's a good thought there. Buxton with this slick surface just needs to take a little bit off that, and Garza's probably in, really threatening them getting around the corner. Big swinger. Chested down nicely by Seattle U. Lots of space. McGlynn flicks it out. Westra receives the ball back. Left boots into the box. Nice defending by Utah Valley. Buxton on his horse. Seattle U stays with possession. Uderitz trying to find his teammate. Nice closing speed by Mesa. And that's an unfortunate touch off of Gabriel Ruiz to give way for a Utah Valley throw in. Really great job there by Seattle U to get out of pressure. Austin Buxton is flying in. 
and uh, 27 does a nice little chip. But then they're, they're 24, the south side wing flicks it and gets that 1-2 right back to him. Really good job there by Seattle. And Felix comes out of nowhere to take that ball back by Utah Valley. 82nd minute. You can hear Greg Moss and company yelling for Bucks and just take off. Now Adachi. Utah Valley still on top, 2 nothing. Seattle U trying to spoil the clean sheet and find some miraculous two goal tiebreaker here in the final nine minutes or so, eight minutes of this regulation. Utah Valley trying to hold on for what would be their fourth shutout on the year and the first time ever beating Seattle U. Big boomer up the field. With less than eight minutes in the game, you've seen UVU just take a complete defensive mentality now. You hear Greg Moss preaching from the sidelines to get back, stay organized, defend as a group. All these outlet balls have just been kicked to the corner, you know, playing to the position to get it out of their half. So they're going to sit in as much as they can with this 2-0 lead, try to waste some time and get it out of their half. There's a flick up field. Garza was on. Seattle's going to be forced to play a little bit more direct now. You're going to see some more long balls as they try to get into UVU's half and create opportunities as much as they can here with seven, minute, seven eight minutes left in the game. Good ball movement by Utah Valley. And then Ani doing what he does best. Coming in from his defender spot to take away. McGlynn thought about it. Instead goes near side. Swung back towards that far post. Ani. McGlynn dispossessed by Utah Valley. And booted all the way back towards Adachi. Ani, great header back across the frame. Really scary there for the Wolverines. Another Great opportunity, the Red Hawks. Believe it was uh, Noble again, almost is able to get his foot on it. Ball bouncing around the box and a shot fired high above <laughs> Will Wright. You have to think if Noe Mesa takes his time just a smidge more, he might have been able to put this one in the top of the net. Great composure. <laughs> yeah, great cross, falls to his foot. He's able to keep the ball, even with Longmire on his back, push him, takes a turn and he has to keep that down, you know. I know that you're being bumped around, he's knocked off balance a little bit, but he's leaning way too far back and, this, and, and skies it because of it. So he's got to stay over that ball to give his team an opportunity with six minutes left in this game. Seattle U has had their opportunities and their looks, especially later in this second half. And they just have not been able to capitalize. The whistle was called, and it looks like it will be a Utah Valley free kick. Just inside the Seattle U territory. Croman hook. Looks to go near side. This one trickles away, and it'll be a goal kick for Adachi. And the Utah Valley faithful again. It is fall break, and so the crowd is usually twice, sometimes three or four times this size. But those faithful who have braved the cold weather have come out, and they're making a lot of noise as we inch closer and closer to this Utah Valley victory. What would be their sixth in a row and first time ever. A beautiful, classy play there. Here's an in-swinging ball. Oh, you have to love that class. That was filth of the highest order. 
You said it right as players. We call that a little filthy nutmeg. He toe, you know, he's toe, got his toes on that sideline. Does a little back heel, megs him. Some tensions flare up here. Chris Greer just lets him play. He knows he only has a couple more minutes left. Gonna have a talk with Serna. More confusion. Greer demands that the ball be moved back. And it will be a free kick. A yellow card to Gabriel Ruiz. Seattle U's second yellow card on the evening. As Moss awaits to come back into the ball game. Again, that Utah Valley crowd making a lot of noise here. Wheel Wright and company wanting to keep this clean sheet. They do not want to leave that door open a crack to let Seattle U back into this one. And Seattle U on the other side, marching up to that front doorstep with a lot of momentum here. Trying to have a battering ram behind it to bust open this door. There's the ball inside the box, bouncing up around. Lombmeyer flicks this one up and away. Not too far, however. Shot back towards the box. And kicked upfield. Utah Valley escapes. Garza trying to apply pressure. Sloppy tackle, probably another yellow card for Utah Valley. So two yellow cards apiece. Yeah, right decision here. Big touch. IU thought he could have got there in time. Just a little late on the tackle. Didn't get him. I think he's able to jump a little bit over, but clips his ankles. Enough for the foul and a deserving yellow, I believe. Too dangerous right there. Avila good. The big boomer. Right at Will Wright. Snatches that one out of the air. 87th minute, almost halfway through. Wheel right trying to find Garza in mid-stride. IU got a foot on it. Now McGlynn sprinting for Seattle U. Flirts with that end line, swings that ball in. He had a man. Solid defending again by Leonetti and company by Utah Valley as they try to defend yet another Seattle U corner. This one quickly taken, punched in towards the box, headed up and away. Seattle U should fire this one right back at Wheel Wright, and they do. Wheel Wright gobbles this one up with ease. Good cross there by, by the Red Hawks, and uh, honestly, a scary moment for the Wolverines as Joseph Wheel Wright came out to punch it, but was nowhere near it, almost two or three feet off it. A missed touch by Utah Valley. Zaire Vasquez wants that one back. He burned his man. He had acres in front of him. Yeah, he's going to be dreaming of that, about that one tonight. That could have been the moment to just absolutely defeat the Red Hawks, put this up 3-0 with that much space one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Unfortunate there. But as I was saying before, too, you know, we talked about it, the Red Hawks knocking on the, knocking on the door. You know, these last 10 minutes, and uh, Joseph Wilwright comes out and just not not even close to that. Luckily, Wolverines are able to clear and get out of there. Moss checks back in for the Wolverines, trying to solidify this shutout. Moss on his horse, trying to put the official dagger in the hearts of the Red Hawks. McGlynn lurking. And this one kicked away by Kromenhoek. Little over a minute and a half left to play in the ball game. Ani using his body, a la Frischnecht. 
Neto, dispossessed. Too strong. Lots of physicality on that possession. Another free kick by Seattle U. Gabriel Ruiz. Another quick kick trying to find Ani in that top corner. Another boot up field trying to waste some time by Utah Valley. Less than a minute to play in regulation. And the Wolverines can smell this victory with every tick of the clock. Closer and closer. Ani, relentless. And a foul is called the free kick for Seattle U. And a yellow card surely coming. Usually Alec Felix is a really smart player, great soccer IQ. Alex to dribble there at the midfield with less than a minute left in the game. He just needs to clear that in the corner. I understand him wanting to waste a little bit more time, but he should have done better there. And then a needless foul, 30 seconds left in the game. I don't know if it's enough time to get two, but we've seen crazier things in life. Absolutely. But just a dumb foul, honestly, with 30 seconds left in the game for these guys to be able to stop the clock and get a ball into the box. A little over 30 seconds left in regulation. There's the ball swung in. And this one headed away by Kromenhook. Moss trying to keep it in play. Cannot. Flag stays up. Will be a Seattle U throw in. About 10 seconds left in regulation. This one trying to catch Wheelwright off guard right into his hands. And that will seal it for Utah Valley. Utah Valley victorious at home. Continues their win streak to six games in a row. And that will be the first time that they have taken down and clipped the feathers of the Red Hawks from Seattle U. History in the making for the Wolverines tonight. Uh, between.